Does Toby Keith deserve to be in the Country Music Hall of Fame? Some people are saying no. That he was only voted in as a sympathy vote. I wrote your number on the 50. Well, well, well. I'm here to show you why I think that's a bunch of BS. On March 18th, 2024, it was officially announced that Toby Keith would be inducted into the Hall of Fame. But as we know, unfortunately, he wasn't there to see it. Because on February 4th, Toby Keith lost his long and fierce battle with stomach cancer. And country music will never be the same. The Hall of Fame is just about the highest honor you can give in country music, short of Hank Williams coming back from the dead and giving you a standing ovation. But the question remains, does Toby Keith belong there? I think absolutely, but we're gonna show you why. Let's take a look at the songs that prove beyond a reasonable doubt why Toby Keith deserves his spot. We'll explore his career from all different styles and eras, and while it is a sad time for fans of Toby, we're gonna have some fun too. I mean, do you think the guy who wrote Red Solo Cup would want everybody moping around? No, I don't think so. Before we dive in, please hit that thumbs up icon to show our channel some support. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the latest episode. Now, come on and grab your red solo cup with whatever you have in it, and let's go find out. What, what happened? happened? The Hall of Fame. Forget country music, Toby Keith is one of the biggest artists of all time. Why then was he inducted into the Hall of Fame on a technicality? Now Toby had already been inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame back in 2015, and the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2021. Now the Country Music Hall of Fame was the natural next step, but Toby's induction is actually an unusual choice. Here's why. Stars aren't usually inducted into the hall the year they pass. Seriously, the rules actually prohibit that. To keep people from voting with rose-colored glasses out of sympathy. But Toby Keith was a special case. Because he died the day before the CMA received the voting results. None of the voters knew just how close Toby was to death. All they were thinking about was Toby's decades of brilliant tunes and success. But sadly, Toby didn't live long enough to receive that honor. Some of his fans are saying that Toby should have been inducted years ago, so that he could have experienced it himself. While I wish this was true, it's up to us to appreciate Toby and his music now. So, let's take a look at the top songs that prove that Toby Keith really did earn his spot in the Hall of Fame. Courtesy of The Red, White, and Blue. This might be one of the angriest and most patriotic country songs of all time. Recognize when we see your glory flying. So what's the true story behind this ode to the greatest country on earth? In March of 2001, Toby Keith's father died when an out of control charter bus careened into his vehicle. Just a few months later, the 2001 attacks in New York happened. Enraged by both these absolute tragedies, Toby was inspired to write, courtesy of the red, white, and blue, The Angry American. Can you believe the song only took him 20 minutes to write? I mean, it takes me 20 minutes to do the dishes. But that was all Toby needed to write a classic. But even without the sob story, the song just kicks butt. Who else could have thought of something so cool as when the Statue of Liberty starts shaking her fist? And when those bells kick in, it's like you literally hear freedom ring. When I think of Toby Keith, this is the song that first comes to mind. Don't let the old man in. Now this song, a tender and sweet tune about death, has now kind of taken on a different sad meaning in the light of Toby's passing. Don't let the old man in. So what's the true story behind this hauntingly beautiful song? Well, the track was inspired by a meeting Toby had with Clint Eastwood. Toby asked the aging director how he had so much energy at the age of 88. Clint told him, quote, I don't let the old man in. I mean, that's awesome. 
And so, Toby wrote the song, and then recorded a demo and sent it to Clint. He was sick at the time, resulting in a wary, raspy voice, but Clint loved it. And he also used it in his film, The Mule. Red Solo Cup Okay, I know this is a party song, but hear me out. Because Red Solo Cup is one of the best reasons why Toby deserves his spot in the Hall of Fame. Let's have a party! Because frankly, few songs have touched the lives of as many people as Red Solo Cup. Sure, it might not have the emotional weight of a touching ballad, but what's better than a good party, huh? Toby was a good man, a good husband, and a patriot. But let's not forget, he could party too. I mean, when I die, I don't want people moping around. I want them to enjoy life. Yeah, I want them to party. And I do believe that Toby Keith would feel the same. Should have been a cowboy. Should have been, cow been a cowboy was Toby's breakout single. For most other artists, this would have been a one hit wonder, but not for Toby. Like many of his best songs, this one too was inspired by a true story. Toby and his friends were at a honky tonk, and one of them went to ask a pretty girl to dance, and she turned him down. 15 minutes later, a young cowboy came in, and it turned out she could dance. All of his friends told that guy, you should have been a cowboy. And just like that, boom, a classic song was born in Toby Keith's mind. But there's also good reason that this song tore up the charts. Not all of us have been cowboys, but I'm pretty sure all of us dreamed about being one. By referencing cowboy movies and songs, it's less about the Wild West and more about the little daydreams that carry us all through life. Crying for me, Wayman's song. Toby Keith excelled at every side of country music, and this song shows his power to explore grief and sadness through music based on a tragic true story. Crying for me. Wayman Tisdale was most famous for being an NBA player, but his first love was music, and he recorded jazz music throughout his career. He got Toby to help him out on one of his albums, and while you wouldn't expect the two to have that much in common, they sure hit it off and a beautiful friendship was born. But Wayman was diagnosed with cancer in 2007, and he passed away two years later. In the middle of his grief, Toby wrote this heart-wrenching ballad for his good friend. The song is a slow-burning groove, complete with a jazzy saxophone in a fitting tribute to Wayman. The song goes, quote, You showed me how I'm supposed to live, and now you showed me how to die. Showed me how I'm supposed to live, and now you showed me how to die. Life's truest lesson, and sadly, predicting the way we would eventually feel about him. You shouldn't kiss me like this. Many of Toby's biggest hits are fiery rockers about America, and to be honest, dude stuff. But this tender tune showed that he could bring it for the ladies too. When you kiss me like this. Now all the real fans of Toby already knew he could spin a ballad, of course. But this incredibly tender song leaves absolutely no doubt. If you've ever been spun around, around, and around by somebody playing with your heart, you certainly can relate to these lyrics. This is the kind of song that you just can't help but slow dance to, even if it's just with a broom in your own kitchen. How do you like me now? Alright, this kind of song about getting rejected, getting famous, and rubbing it in their face is a classic kind of song. But leave it to Toby Keith to write what's possibly the best one. You might think this is directed at a specific person who broke Toby's heart. But Toby was a bit smarter than that, and not quite as bitter. He said, quote, It can be about an old flame, or a boss, or a teacher. How do you like me now? Whatever it means to each individual. Like many of his best songs, Toby Keith took an intense personal feeling and made it universal. And I do believe that anyone who hears this song on the radio will relate to it a bit. American Soldier Okay, so Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue showed Toby's patriotism at its most fierce. But American Soldier showed another side to Toby's values. In this heartfelt ode to our country's servicemen, Toby plays the role of an American soldier, highlighting those voices that too often go unheard. 
And of course, Toby puts his signature spin on the song, tenderly crooning the verses and belting out the chorus. I'm just trying to be a father. Honestly, it's enough to make a grown man cry. As good as I once was. Tons of musicians find it difficult to channel their young star image into middle age gracefulness. They either act like they're still 18 with peach fuzz on their lips, or they turn into the grumpy, boring old man. So how did Toby deal with this issue? Well, by writing a ripping song, of course. Toby was 46 in 2005 when As Good As I Once Was came out. Now 46 isn't exactly ancient, but it's not young either. And this great song addresses that while Toby and the listener might not be in their glory days, they still have the strength to be, well, as good as they once were. And today, even after passing, Toby Keith's music is indeed as good or even better as it once was. All right, that's my list of the most important and best Toby Keith songs. And I know there are dozens more that you could argue to be on this list, but hey, isn't that kind of the point? We're not here to rank these songs or argue which is best. Toby had dozens of songs over the years, with one or many for each occasion. For date night with the love of your life, the fishing trip with the guys, or a slow dance at your daughter's wedding. Toby Keith has been the soundtrack to a lot of our lives. On How Do You Like Me Now, Toby sang, quote, I couldn't make you love me, but I always dreamed about living in your radio. And, well, he continues to do that, to live in our radios, iPods, CDs, and smartphones. Toby Keith may be gone, but he will not be forgotten. All right, that's my time. Now we need to hear from you. Please get in the comments and tell me your favorite song that I didn't mention. What's your favorite song from my list? And who out there saw Toby Keith perform live? Please get in the comments and tell us all things Toby Keith. If you enjoyed our video, please hit the thumbs up icon, subscribe to the channel, and come back often so we can keep telling you what happened. And Toby Keith, thank you for the music.